Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and smash that like button. Today we wanted to talk about Al-Bukhari, in this case Imam Al-Bukhari. Who is Imam Al-Bukhari and what did he do in his life? Muslims all over the world and in this case the Sunni Muslim world have to go to the Quran as their first most trusted source. Their second source is the Sunnah, the Sunnah of their Prophet, the teaching of their Prophet, the traditions of their Prophet in the Sunnah. Where is the Sunnah documented? You can find it in the second most trusted source in Islam, Al-Bukhari collection of Hadith. It's called Sahih Al-Bukhari. To understand who Al-Bukhari is, we did some research to see if this guy is a trustful guy. Or should Sunni Muslims reject him and call him a liar and a deceiver? Let us start this teaching and see if Sunni Muslims should actually reject him or accept his hadith collection in Sahih al-Bukhari. As we know, Muhammad became a prophet in the year 610 and he died at the age of 63 in the year 632. Now, if we have look closely, we see that Muhammad al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari, he died in the year 870 AD. So that's more than 200 years that this guy, Imam al-Bukhari, came after the death of Muhammad. More than 200 years. So this guy never spoke to Muhammad. He never seen Muhammad face to face. So how did this guy get the words of Muhammad? Well, what he did, he went from Bukhara, Uzbekistan, when he was born in 810 AD. He's, he's not an Arab. He's a Persian Islamic scholar, right? He's not an Arab. So we have to do some math here. When did he learn Arabic? to speak to all these people who gave him basically the hadith, right? Because he was collecting hadith. This guy is a collector of hadith. So he went through a lot of cities in the Middle East to collect the words of Muhammad's basically. And all these guys that you always see in the chain. Haddathana this and Haddathana that, narrated by, and this guy said, and the other guy said, and all the way to the last guy in the Hadith chain, right? So this guy, when did he learn Arabic? When did he become a scholar? And when did he start to collect the Hadith? Muslims need to do some study, because we're going to show you that this all does not add up. This makes no sense because this guy only lived for 60 years, right? How did he manage to collect so many hadith without any problems? When did he eat? Where did he sleep? Did he even pray five times a day, every day? So basically this guy did nothing in his life but collecting hadith day in day out day in day out right so this guy was basically nothing but a robot who was collecting hadith and we're going to show you even more damaging stuff because everything that was told about this guy during his lifetime is nothing but a lie and a deception and we are going to prove that to you Ibn 
Al Salih said, the number of hadith in the book of Imam Bukhari, the Sahih, is seven hundred. Sorry, 7,275 hadith, including hadith occurring repeatedly. So hadith that is repeated constantly by Imam Bukhari. It has been said that this number ex excluding repeated hadith is 2,230. So basically from the 7,275, only 2,230 are hadith that is not repeated right so basically you have only 2230 hadith and this is in the series called kutub al sitta by imam al bukhari in his hadith collection let us continue ibn al salah said again the first to author a sahih was bukhari abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ismail al Jufay, followed by Abu al Hussein, Muslim ibn al Hajjaj, and Naysaburi al Qushayri, who was his student, sharing many of the same teachers. So, what is said basically here is that Imam Muslim was the student of Imam al-Bukhari. This is why you have a collection called Sahih al-Bukhari and you have Sahih Muslim. These are the most authentic books after the Quran. Did you catch it? So Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari are the most authentic books after the Quran. As Shafi said, the book of Bukhari is the more authentic of the two and more useful. So <laughs> basically, Imam Bukhari, his collection of hadith is the most trusted right after the Quran, right? You have also something called Hadith Qudsi, but that's off topic. But Imam al-Bukhari is basically the second more authentic hadith that is reported from the mouth of Muhammad himself, the Prophet of Islam. To show you the problems that we have found against this Imam al-Bukhari, I'm going to show you really devastating and damaging information that maybe is not known to many Muslims. And that's the following. It is said that Imam Bukhari collected about 600,000 hadith, not <laughs> 1,000, not 2,000, but 600,000 hadith. So this guy did nothing else but collect hadith. He didn't eat, he didn't sleep. He only could collected hadith in his lifetime. Of which some, around 7,000, as we showed you earlier, all have been classified as authentic. Collecting, writing, scrutinizing, classifying, deciding whether authentic or not by a committee, etc., is an enormous task. Besides, Imam Bukhari claims that he prayed two rak'ats of sunnah before recording any hadith. If it's assumed that the average time of a hadith to go through, the full process of collecting, etc. is one day, he should have needed 600,000 days, which when divided by 365 is about 1644 years. So basically, let's say if Imam al-Bukhari collected one hadith, one hadith, we will take for one hadith one day because it takes a lot of time, right, to do what you have to do during a day. You, uh, because this guy was praying, he was eating, he was sleeping, you have to count all of that, right? So let's say, right, recording, classifying every hadith, it takes him one day, right? So if 600,000 hadith, if we divide that by 365, we get 1644 years of collecting all the hadith. Do the math, guys. So are you telling me that this guy lived for so long? Then that means that Imam al-Bukhari is still walking in the future, certainly among us, and he will still walk in the future as a living man.
Hence, to accomplish this task in a mere period of 16 years. So according to Islam, this guy did it in 16 years. Amazing, right? This makes sense, right guys? He didn't take, it didn't take him 1644 years, it took him only 16 years to collect the 600,000 hadith and collecting them, writing, scrutinizing, classifying, etc. So everything that comes on top of that, right? So as he claimed, it's impossible, thus questioning his integrity and honesty. And we have more damaging stuff, guys. Dhabi, Dhabi said, Bukhari was heard saying, I have memorized 100,000 authentic hadith and 200,000 which are less than authentic. So according to, uh, according to Imam al-Bukhari, this guy memorized 300,000 hadith. 300,000 hadith. Can you imagine that guys? 300,000 hadith, including all the chains, all the names in a hadith. You know how many detailed information is in one hadith only? And how long a hadith can be? Try to memorize 300,000 hadith in 16 years. That's more than a lifetime. And like we said to you, let's say, forget about the memorizing. If you have 600,000, right, total, and half of them is memorized, how long did this guy live? Right? 1644 years. With memorizing. Try to memorize one letter, just one letter. How long does it take you? A complete day maybe, right? And try to recite it without any mistakes. And that for 16 years, guys. 16 years according to him. He did 16 years for memorizing 300,000 hadith. This guy is nothing but a liar. And remember, this guy only lived for six, 60 years, right? He didn't live really long. He, was, he died really at young age, right? So in other words, Imam Bukhari claims that he memorized a total number of 300,000 hadith during his lifetime. In just 60 years? I mean, I think he, the guy started memorizing the Quran in the belly of his mother. So Muslims, is this guy a liar? Of course he is. Else, I think he was the super duper computer of his lifetime. He's a, he was a walking and memorizing supercomputer who memorized 300,000 hadith out of his head. And what about the rest of the 300, right? Because he claimed that he collected 600,000 hadith and half of them he memorized. So according to Imam al-Bukhari, he memorized 300,000 hadith out of his head by heart we, let us say you are memorizing one hadith, because remember, one hadith can be really long hadith. One hadith can contain more than thousand words, right? Some hadith can be smaller, maybe let's say 300 words. It's not possible to memorize more than one hadith at a day. Right? Because he took 16 years to collect 600,000 hadith. And 300,000 of them, he memorized them by heart. If we divide that with 365 days, we get 822 years. 822 years. But Imam al-Bukhari claimed that he did it in 16 years. Just 16 years. I think Imam al-Bukhari was really a vampire. 
he used to collect also besides the hadith he also collected human blood and he drank that blood this is why he stayed healthy for 822 years he was a walking talking vampire of his lifetime this is why he lived for 822 years he didn't live for 60 years only right right Muslims you believe this right <laughs> Lord of mercy memorizing 300,000 hadith including all the details all the names in the narration all the names that are mentioned in one hadith Haddathana this and Haddathana that narrated by him and this guy said and the other guy said all the way to Muhammad the Prophet of, Muh <laughs> of Islam said and then the hadith comes right because first you have to go through the nar narration through the chain of narration and then the hadith itself is mentioned underneath it right as you see here this is an example you can see for yourself how long one hadith can be and as you can see these are the narrations so are you telling me that Imam Bukhari memorized all the details every detail that you see including the hadith itself and the chain of narration no way no way so let's say he memorized just one hadith a day because he needed to make sure if this hadith is correct or not right it took him one day to memorize to authenticate a hadith to go and ask around more than one guy to make sure hey is this true yes this must be true oh okay this one is not true right so 300,000 hadith memorized by heart and it took him 822 years to, to do that just for one hadith but we know that this guy only lived for 60 years and he did it only for 16 years because the guy need to grow up right you're not going to tell me he was already collecting hadith as a two-year-old boy right so he did it in only 16 years one six right and he really died young at the age of 60 years old so this might not make sense this is a lie Imam al-Bukhari guys as you see he was nothing but a liar and a deceiver or are you are going to say he was a walking talking vampire who lived for 822 years pick and choose Muslims think about your own salvation guys you have to put trust in this guy Imam al-Bukhari your salvation is on the line think about what you will do next as a Muslim if you watch this video are you really going to put your trust in this guy or are you going to choose to leave Islam to the mad you know try to memorize the PI number and especially the numbers that come after the dot try to do that look how hard it is for you to do to memorize all these numbers and there were a couple of guys who actually managed who were really genius to memorize the numbers right and in 1981 an Indian man named Rajan Mahadevan sorry for butchering your name Mr. Rajan accurately recited 31,811 digits of PI from memory in 1989 Japanese or Japan's Haidika Tomiori recited 40,000 digits without any problems the current Guinness world record is held by Lu Chao of China who in 2005 recited 67,890 digits of PI so these people are geniuses they have basically a photographic memory right to memorize all these numbers what about 600,000 hadiths right 600,000 hadith 
collecting them and memorizing 300,000 out of his head. This guy should have been in the Guinness World Record 1200 years ago. <laughs> Guys, so just memorizing numbers, you have to be a genius. What about 300,000 hadiths, including all the details, including all the names? This cannot be true. This is a lie. This guy was nothing but a liar and a deceiver, as you see. So Muslims think twice in putting your salvation, your soul on the line for people like these deceivers and liars. So yes, he is a liar and a deceiver like his fake prophet. Everything that he said is nothing but a lie and deception. This is why you have so many devastating and humiliating hadiths about Muhammad. That he could, in one night, he could go and have sex with all his wives in one, in just one night. No normal, healthy man could do that. All these humiliating stories that we can find in Sahih al-Bukhari about the Prophet of Islam was nothing but a fabrication from this guy. Inventing hadiths to make money because we know Islam is a big business. And to be a sheikh and an imam, it's really a good business. And this is why still sheikhs in Islam in 2019 are deceiving those poor victims in Islam. Normal Muslims are nothing but victims of this satanic, deceptive, lying cult. Muslims wake up, leave this satanic cult, leave Islam, because it's nothing but a deception. Jesus is Lord, join him, come back to Jesus, because only he can save you. If Islam is fake, then Christianity must be the truth, because we know Muhammad created Islam to attack Lord Jesus Christ. Come back to Jesus, folks. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false. Thank you for watching. Please share this video around on social media and God bless.